busy consuming turkey, leftover turkey, U.S. holiday. So uh, no CDTV on the day after our Thanksgiving. Um, this week on ZDTV, oh, you know what? I forgot to bring up PowerPoint. I always bring up PowerPoint and have the little slide ready. Let me see if I can bring PowerPoint up real quickly. Get our bumper out here. Share the screen. Do this. Oh, my goodness. Um, yes. So I've had uh, some trouble. Let's just say some troubles. Yeah, a little, a little with, the road. <laughs> <laughs> with the restream lately. It's being kind of a pain. Uh, I'm going to have to duplicate this whole thing. Save as uh, a.pptx and then go in and delete all of these stupid slides because last time I tried to share a slide deck, it didn't work. Let's add a source. We'll add a presentation as a source. We'll upload c colon temp a.pptx. And that'll upload, and hopefully it'll come. Let's see. Something's being, coming through. It's being processed at the moment. Uh, got a new computer, Ken. And the oh, new computer. that's what's going on. That is what's going on. The new computer has strange settings that uh, Restream here is not too pleased with, and I don't quite understand why that is. Um, it's, easy to thing... it's easy to underestimate how intrusive uh, setting up a new system can be. You know, this, it's not like it's an application, right? I run this from the browser and you would just think that the browser would work the same. And It uses sure, devices though. So sure enough, it doesn't. It, yeah, well, you're right. And, I, and I'm still having no luck sharing this slide. It's taking forever to be processed, which is uh, a lot of fun. Let's go to the display settings and swap the presenter and that. We'll try this. Let's try this. Where are we going? Oh, I love watching the sausage get made like this. This is the best. Share a screen. Share the whole window. Entire screen. Boom. All right. And whew, we did it. Jeez. That was All down a mess. From here. That's right. Can only can only go down. That's right. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, here is this week's ZDTV. Uh, called it ZD ZDception. I like a Ziggy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I had to go online and find out what the movie poster looked like so I could re reproduce it at least close enough. And the that probably took me ten minutes. You know, I would. I'm no designer. <laughs> what did you bring um, cooking up here with this ZDception? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so I was busy talking to Ryan, who works on the console team, as we call it, the Mop console or the Net Foundry console or Cloud ZD, as it's colloquially called or known as the product. He's a UI guy. And uh, there's a initiative going on to unify the two UIs. And so if you're out on discourse, in fact, I could probably bring up the discourse. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's bring up Ryan's discourse post. Where is discourse? A little announcement. Yeah. Where's Ryan? Here's Ryan. Oh, shall we? Shall we feature Ryan? Let's feature Ryan real quick. Ryan Galetto, right there. I see the first thing uh, after Ryan made this big post. Our buddy Ken decided to ask a question, and so Ken followed up right down here. You can see a whole bunch of discussion going on. But anyway, what this is all about is unifying the ZD console, the UI for the NetFoundry slash Cloud ZD console has been um, the one that was around basically before there was such a thing as ZD. And so it was designed at a time prior to ZD and, and didn't use the same words and didn't look quite the same. And, and so now Zach has been, the ZD admin console has been um, stable for the most part, I think, and people use it, people like it. And so we're trying to bring that whole experience together. So Ryan and I were talking and the existing ZD admin console actually uses, uh, I think raw JavaScript. It doesn't have a framework per se. Um, and so the MOP team, the NetFoundry console team, uh, 
they or cloud ZD console, I guess, maybe, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I should call it. Um, they were uh, using Angular or are using Angular. And so they have an initiative to go through and angularize. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it sounds good. The existing admin console. It's not anglicize, so it must be. <laughs> Definitely is not that. Uh, and so that's what that's what they're doing. And with that comes some interesting things. One of the interesting things to me is that the admin console from NetFoundry is actually delivered from a CDN. It's actually a single page app or SPA. I don't think people call them spas, but maybe they do. I'm not a UI guy, so I don't spend too much time in there. Sounds appealing. <laughs> it sounds very relaxing. Um, and so anyway, it's a single page app. And that means that they had to do a little bit of work to rearrange some stuff in the Zach, which used to be node-based. And so there was a node-based app that had uh, some node-based stuff. And it was node-based really to get around one particular problem, which is the admin console was originally designed to service any number of um, ZD overlay networks. So you would go to Zach and you would log in. And the first thing you would do is specify some URL to connect to. And then what do you want to call it? You know, my Zach or my admin console or my network or whatever. With an SPA, um, there's no notion of uh, state to be saved in the same in the same way. So there's a little little question about what will happen with that. And in fact, that's exactly what Ken was asking way down here. Will settings.json still work? Oh, the mouse is doing that mouse thing. Uh, I can't get. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I do not understand why oh. I do not understand why restream will not show show me like I am at the top of the screen right there. Um, anyway, <laughs> the I can't get there. Uh, let's see if I can do it like this. This one <laughs> is Ken asking about settings.json. Anyway, long, longer story. Uh, this got me this got me thinking because with a single page app, there is now um, they did some work around getting the node server to, to, to run properly. And so the node server now runs. And I thought there was another post after this. Yeah. Um, and so everything, everything that used to be out there should still be out there. But when Ryan and I were talking, I was thinking, well, geez, you know, uh, when you go through the quick start, you install the controller, you install the router, you install Zach. There's basically three steps, and they're all individual and discrete servers, all with individual and discrete ports. And they're all um, servers, one of which the controller is actually an HTTP server. It serves up a web API, right? Like that's its job is to provide the client API, provide the management API. Now it'll provide the OIDC API, an API I haven't, I haven't even explored, but that's coming for uh, HA. And so I was thinking, geez, it's a, sim it's a single page web app. Um, if I could just deliver the pages as content, then I could just host my Zach in my controller. And I thought that would be a fun little project. And so that's what I went and I tried to do. And so that's what um, the start of today will be. It's not the, this is just driving me nuts. Uh, let's go back to this. Nope. Why are all the screens blank? It's the end of the slideshow. All right, well, that makes sense. Um, so it's not so much the inception part though. The inception part will come afterward because I don't think what, what we're gonna do hosting the Zach, that's the second bullet point here. I don't think hosting the Zach and exploring XWeb will take a tremendous, tremendous amount of time, but I do want to hack on what I did to see if I can turn it into Z deception. And so that's what we'll end up doing. All right. You want to go one step further, not yeah, just, huh? not just you know embed the ZD console in the API so that it's a website, not just an API, but you go to the right place in the API with HTTP and you get, the website that is the console, the web app that is the console. Yeah. 
So yeah, exactly. Want to go past that to Z deception. Yeah. All right. So with that said, oh, that's why it took so long. I uh, apparently. Oh no, actually. Hang on one second. Did I? All right, I got to figure this out. I think I might have deleted all my slides from my the wrong presentation. Well, it'll be fun. Okay, well, I'll deal with that later. Uh, I do have to figure out how to slide or share all this stuff again because, as we covered moments ago, my oh, I didn't save the PowerPoint. That's the problem. <laughs> Uh, that's why it took so long. I uploaded 65 slides. I didn't want to upload 65 slides. All right. I wanted to share a window and this window oh, and this. Okay. That seems to be legible. Yes. Yes. And let's see if the mouse tracks. Can you see the mouse at all? Oh, okay. I see. If I move the window... Then I can't. No, what, the mouse. What if I do this? If I put that over oh, there, it did, it did appear for a moment. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's some there's some well. weird permissioning stuff going on, and I can't quite sort out why. Uh, so, do you see me highlighting something or no? It looks like Zach is highlighted on seventeen. It look really. Now I. Uh, the moment that I began to verbalize, I saw 11 through 13 highlighted. This is going to be the worst ZDTV ever, Ken, if we can't figure this out. I, I mean, it's been, how long, it's been 20 minutes now, and it's not upgraded. It's not updating. So let's see. If I move this to here, will it... Does that... Okay. Seems like I'm, these are I'm, jumping around. Like how about the, unless? I highlighted unless. Do you see unless? I... I'm not sure what you mean like there this. now. So, the so what's there, going on? Like, yeah. What's um, going on is I have to actually, um, oh my goodness. I have to, oh, okay. Okay. Now it seems to be responding. Okay. okay. Responsive. Responsive. <laughs> all right. Well, this is how it's going to have to be. I've got it all the way over on a screen way over here. Uh, and it looks fine, I guess. So that's what we'll do. All right. Um, yeah, so I wanted to be able to host the Zach built as a single page app in my local controller. And I knew that ZD has a bunch of APIs, like I already said, but I didn't, I have never personally gone and looked at XWeb and what that even means. Um, I don't have a particular diagram of it, but what we can do is we can see right here, XWeb is featured prominently. Right. And so if I go into this directory, you'll see, where is this? You'll see XWeb and you'll see middleware and you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's even some doc. That's fun. Look at that. So I knew that there was an API. So I, I tapped Paul and I said, Hey, Paul, which one of these is the simplest of the APIs? And he pointed me at one of them. Why won't it track to my file? I want it to track to the file. Oh boy. Oh boy. I can't go any further right. Let's see if I can right there. Oh my goodness. This is just infuriating. Oh, okay. Now that I'm... all right. So now it attracted to handler. That's what I wanted it to do. That's why. All right. It's working. I'm so sorry. All right. So um I knew that. Uh, that we had an API and I wanted to know what the, the easiest one was I could go learn from. And so uh, Paul pointed me at the health check handler and how it works. And so I came into here and I, first thing I do is I scroll down. I see how many lines of code we're dealing with. And I see 127. 127 is not a scary number for me, right? What I was like, if I saw 30,000 or something along those lines, I would know that I was in over my head. Uh, you can even see I was testing some stuff. I got a breakpoint still in there. Um, so I came in here and I took a look and I was like, oh, that's, this is not much code. Let's start investigating what this does. Now in Go, uh, Go has this notion of interfaces and an interface is an interface as long as the thing which you are trying to determine if it's an interface implements all of the functions 
that the interface declares. And so we talked about XWeb a moment before and what is what is actually XWeb. So if I were to go into here, first thing I did is I saw, oh, XWeb.API handler factory and said, okay, it's a new health check API handler factory. So I came down here and I saw that it was this thing and I noticed there were some functions that in Go, uh, you can basically attach functions to structs. It's sort of the way you encapsulate functions on different, not objects, but structs. Uh, and so I noticed that it had a bunch of functions that looked pretty interesting. And so I came in here and oftentimes I'll break a um, function just to see what would happen. And I don't know if I, if I, now I see an error and now I see this and it says, cannot use health check API factory as the type X web uh, API handler factory is what that says. The, the type does not implement API handler factory. Some methods are missing and it's missing the new function. And so right there, I knew that the interface I need to satisfy is called API handler factory. Funny enough, it's right there. So next thing I do is I explore into API handler factory. Again, what am I getting myself into? Oh, it's three functions, right? That's very approachable. Not a whole lot to be done there. There's a binding function, returns string binding value using configurations. Cool. Make a new instance of it and then you validate it. So, you know, just return back an error if the thing is not in a good state, can't use it. Well, that's pretty easy. I could I was like, I can go and do this. And so what I did is I, I actually copied the whole entire, the whole entire file and then replaced the bits that I found to be interesting. And that's where Zach Handler comes from. So if we look at Zach Handler, it's you're gonna notice it does all the same sorts of stuff and looks almost the same has those three functions, by, um, validate, binding, and new. And then also declares a different struct in here, which is a handler. So Golang has this great abstraction around H, has great abstractions around HTTP, one of which is a handler. In the Java world, it's like a servlet filter where basically you are given an incoming request and you're given an outgoing response and you can do a thing right and you can decide what to do with that thing okay so you get you get the request that comes in you get the output stream and then you can respond and write into the stream if you want or you can handle it and then call another handler and so, you so there's can nothing magical about the file name handler.go you just named it that because you planned on using http dot upper handler uh, there's nothing the handler.go is totally not important yeah, yeah. Uh, in my in my brain this is the zach handler and and right. when i say the zach handler i'm just saying this is the thing that will handle delivering zach to a, a person or you know a, a machine or whatever so it, the handler is just the thing that does the thing right like that's all it means to me and that's why it's a http handler handles HTTP, Zach handler, handle Zach, right? So that's how it works in my head. So there's this admin console handler and ZD in retrospect, I think, Ken, you pointed this out, kind of redundant. Probably could just call it admin console or just console or something along those lines. Um, and it it is of itself uh, an HTTP handler, but it also had some other functions in here like binding, and options and root path, all this sort of stuff. And then go land, you can click on this interface and go find where they're all declared. Again, not scary. Four functions that I have to implement and then it is an HTTP handler of itself. Cool, it's easy, easy peasy. And so I said, let's go for it. And I decided to, and that's where this thing comes about. And so if we take a look at, let's get rid of this. How do I, there it goes. All right, so if you take a look at what's going on in here, oh, one other thing you'll notice at the top here, it's got this binding and it tells you what the binding is, health checks, right? And so if you have ever, this is gonna be, oh, I can do it inside of here. Let's make a terminal inside of here. How do I make a terminal 
inside of here. There's got to be a way to do it. I know there is. There's got to be a button. Right up. there. Look at that. There it is. Uh, and it brings me to PowerShell. <laughs> All right, so now I'm in uh, terminal. That's actually good to know because I don't. Now I can just share one window and just stay here. Yeah. All right. So um, I I don't think this is in this location. Where is the path? I usually copy the path. It didn't drop you this project. No. Yeah, that's where it is. I'm surprised that it's in. Well, you type WSL so that. Well, no, no, I was just surprised. I usually uh, have my code checked out in WSL, oh, not, okay. so not it's in, yeah. And I'm surprised that this project is actually on C colon. Usually, as you can see, oh, yeah. I use WSL. And this, mm -hmm. for unknown reasons, still is uh, located on my Windows side of the house. You had a good reason at the time. I doubt it. <laughs> I think it was just me. Uh, it was where I checked it out first, and I still am trying to trying to move in. You know, it's like a hermit crab with a new shell. You know, you gotta check it out and make sure it works, and you know, get to the right one, find the right one, pretty it up. I still gotta pretty up some stuff anyway. Um, so this is also in the GoLang section. I don't want to be in the GoLang section. I actually want to go to the ZD section. All right, and so. Inside of here, if I uh, go uh, actually make a directory, call it build, where it exists, and then we'll go build dash o build dot slash dot dot. And let this chug along on its way. Make sure it builds. Um, we will take a look at what this does. Oh, well, that's what I wanted to do. I want in the terminal. I was going to bring up a file. So I'm going to instead. I'm going to try to open it in here. Can I open the file? And what I wanted to open is my controller config, which I think I put into temp, into win, uh, Windows, into WSL. And was it quick start? Quick start debug, I think I called it. Controller YAML, yeah. And so we were talking about health checks. We were talking about Zach, and we're talking about binding. And so you'll see down here, binding of Zach. Your XWeb handler here, you need to have a binding declared. And this binding is going to map to the binding that is declared inside of your uh, API section inside your controller config. And it's under I think, web. Never remember. Yep. It's an XWeb web. concept or primitive, a binding. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's it's, and as you can see, it defines web listeners that will be hosted by this controller. Each web listener can host many APIs and be bound to many bind points. And that bind wow. point is what we're making here. We're making that bind point. Mm -hmm. And so and we're I have a Zach bind point. Bind, yeah, so we've defined in your code, in your XWeb code, you've defined what a Zach is. And here you're saying mount a Zach in my web listener, which happens to be the same one that you're Boy, using I hope for that one is... of the APIs. I very well dropped out there. I think uh, some sort of internet. Mm, yeah, there was a little glitch. Just happened here. Yeah, I was just confirming that in your XWeb code you defined a Zach, and then here you're saying I want to bind a one Zach into my web listener. I defined. I defined a constant would be how I would say. Okay. Yep. A Zach. No, not 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 a, not a Zach. No, no, no. A constant. The constant has the value of Zach. I could call it whatever I wanted, right? I could call it Zach Potato. Potato, if I can spike. That, and then all I have to do is go back to my handler and update the binding to be Zach Potato. Right? And now yeah, I'll have a Zach Potato. We don't want that. Nobody wants a Zach Potato. All right. Got all back again. And is this thing still chugging down here? I don't know what's going on. Mm, yes. My CPU seems to be lit. And uh, I don't know exactly what is happening. I feel like perhaps it's downloading every dependency that it's never downloaded before. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I've got plenty of CPUs in this computer, and I have plenty of RAM now. So much RAM. Uh, yeah, it's just Chuck. It's oh, I see. It's crossing. 
it might be crossing the Windows subsystem boundary, which uh, doesn't look like it is, right? Because you're you're in PowerShell on Windows using Windows file system. No, that's a good point. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it's so slow. Honestly, this is uh, much slower than I would expect it. But we've been maybe talking your uh, Go path or Go bin are set to WSL, so it's putting like your your Go path might be it might be caching or your your path your Go cache might be pointing to WSL, so it has to take that IO hit. Can we make a new terminal? New terminal? Oh. Make a new one, find tab, split tab. Can I, sp oh, all right, Never mind. Thanks, Windows. All right, so if we go to build now and run ZD, yeah. Work. Wow. <laughs> you know what it is? Wow. I know what it is. It's Defender. I bet Defender is scanning. So the second time it runs this, it'll be fast. But the very uh, first time it runs, it's def Defender is checking the binary to make sure it's good enough. All right. I think that's what's going on. So we should be able to do a ZD edge quick start on this. And It'll use that. Actually, let's uh, use a different location. Let's say home is C colon temp. And we'll call it uh, ZDTV. Let's see if it'll make that directory. So when this uh, when this thing comes on, because I, I gave the home parameter, when I turn it off, the home directory should still be there. Oh, yes, I need to allow that. All right. So control C, wait. I think the latest build of ZD reacts differently because the control C no longer is immediate. It'll sit here and it'll have timeout. I have to mention that to Andrew or Paul or somebody because I'm pretty sure this thing is trying to communicate somewhere and it'll time out and then it'll exit. Sure of it. I'm sure of it. Still it. Uh, let's see. You're describing the thing I was encountering that I wasn't able to reproduce reliably. Uh, control C yeah. hanging hanging on you. Yeah. I I think there is. So when I did the quick start a while back. Um, it has to exit cleanly, otherwise it just is there forever, you know. And it's just, I think yeah. it's just sitting there forever. All right, now there should be a C colon temp ZDTV. Nope, ZDTV. Yeah, and then inside of there there will be a controller .yaml. So what we can do is we can go to file, and we can go to open C colon temp ZDTV. No, TV .yaml. Y -A. C colon. Um, okay. I'm going to have to, cl I hate clicking. I'm not a clicker. Uh, ZT. I really don't like this dialogue. Look at that. Look, look, just bring me. Okay, fine. Or not. This dialogue is trash. I hope you're watching Go Land. Uh, where is the ZDTV right there? And then controller. All right. You'll see at the bottom of this, I don't have that little block that we just talked about. So I need to emulate, not emulate, copy uh, the location. And then I need to have a YAML. Oh, yeah, good point. So if we go back and we look at the Zach handler here, we'll look for the word options. And so when you make a brand new, uh, when you make a new XWeb and you're in there and you want to host some new API in your controller, then you implement this new function. And when you implement the new function, whatever options you put into that little map that we were just looking at are going to get sent into this function. And yep. so the one I want, I want this location because I have a exploded Zach. I think, let's see, DIR, go on temp, uh, Zach. Nope, where did I put it? I'll have to go get an explode. Oh, it's in downloads, isn't it? Uh, users, print downloads. Yeah. There we go. I do have the SPA that Ryan built for me in this location. So you can see what I need to do 
is I need to supply that particular location to my options. And Ken showed me yesterday that I can just use YAML, which is neat. Actually, not that location. Do I have to quote this? No. I believe that was actually not a, that options was not an array, but rather a dictionary. See how it has open uh, close curly braces above? Yep. Yeah. So a dictionary in uh, YAML looks like what? Just indent, no hyphen. Just there indent. Yeah. Two and colon. So cool. Correct. Yep. So now, so now um, the the value of options is a dictionary that has one key, and that that's equivalent to the JSON you showed earlier. Cool. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run ZD Edge Quick Start, but in my little debugger here, I'm going to give it a home directory, which is C colon ZDTV, C colon temp ZDTV. Right, I think that's what I used. And then I'm going to give it the already initialized flag. Let's just make sure that I used ZDTV like that. Yep. And then I should be able to debug this. But what I'll do is I'll put a breakpoint here. And then we'll let it compile. And hopefully it won't compile nearly as long as it took the last time. Otherwise, we're going to have to talk about the something else. <laughs> um, let's see. Can I get more screen real estate? That was a mistake. Don't do that. Okay. Let's see. Now Goland is compiling for you. Yeah, but hopefully they share the same go root and go path and everything is ready to roll and it'll just go and work and it won't take forever. It's already taking longer than I would hope. And so we're going to have to watch this paint dry. On this new computer is supposed to be shiny and fast and yeah, not exactly. It's got to be uh, I.O. because I noticed it took about an order of magnitude fat longer to compile the ZD project uh, in a Docker container using because it has to write through the I.O. layer of like Docker has the storage layers, which are super useful, but slower than like when you're doing a Docker build, it's slower than native file system. So it's like four seconds on this computer to compile the ZD project natively, and then 40 seconds to do compile it in a Docker container. Quite the difference. And that's with the cache available. Scan option. Wow. Because you can, you can do a go hard. download. You can do a go download uh, before you do a go build and, and save that in a, in a prior storage layer in a Docker build. So the cache is already available. Right. So that's just the last mile to compile the project with all the prerequisites in place. And then if you change go mod or go sum, you have to rerun the go download command too. So you only incur that penalty every time you change the dependencies. Cool. We have a panic, which means I did something wrong. <laughs> but you're doing something. But We're it's finally doing something. Yeah. yeah. Line 220. Did not find the expected hexadecimal number. That looks like Again. a YAML loader error. Well, right. So we have supplied incorrect uh, information here. I'm going to not opt for YAML. I'm going to you're go just back bail to... Out. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go back to J JSON because I know that this worked. Uh, colon, and then that, and then that should be good to go. And let's go ahead and rerun this. I have, in the meantime, I turned off uh, Defender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But boy, that still is Panic 219. That wasn't the error. Did, did we, we might have the wrong shape. No, that's, that is the error. What was the original JSON? Do you still have it somewhere? Yeah, let's go back to... I'm not sure that we so. expressed the right shape for options. Seems like a, a likely scenario, doesn't it? Because we got exactly the same error with both. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, it means it's a data problem. Not a syntax problem. Location, colon, time Zach files. Oh. 
Uh huh. That's oh, gonna be what it so is. So the backslash was telling go. That's gonna be what it is. Yeah. So let's go put your yaml back. Okay, and then let's actually escape it and make it look like a string. Good idea, Ken. Good job. All right, now this thing should start up, right? Hey, there we go. And so now I wanted to be able to look at the location. And so our location should be, right? That looks correct. Play this through, play it through. How do I minimize this? Now I don't have a browser window. Ugh. What a pain. This is such a pain. This sharing, I got to figure out this sharing situation because this is untenable. Let's go back and share my browser. Oh, you know what I should do? I know what I should do. I'll just curl it. You can just believe me that it's there. Windows, go to Golang, share this back up again. Go back to that terminal window. And then from here, I should be able to uh, exit curl to HTTPS colon, uh, I need a minus K on this. Uh, HTTPS colon slash slash local host colon 1280 slash Zach. Error unhandled, uh, not found. Resource requested was not found. So what did we screw up here, Ken? It maybe, says the Zach. Maybe add a dash found. V to your curl command so we can see what the request was. Sometimes there, it could it could be like the difference between an implicit trailing slash or something. So you definitely got a response from the server. So the 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 origin is correct. You got a four hundred four. Okay. Yep. And what was the actual? And so what we can get request. Well, what for? we can do, uh, what well, what we can do is we can come into here because part of XWeb is this function. Start. Oh, I'm the wrong one. Oh, you went to client, oh. not management. Client, not management. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just because it didn't find the, the right thing. So one of the uh, functions that you are to implement is this is handler function. And so when I come, did I not change the potato? <laughs> no, I did. So uh, when I come into here, I wonder if I didn't change potato. It still says Zach. Okay. Because if I if I didn't do that, that would obviously be one reason. And if I didn't do this, that would be another reason. So when you uh, implement the XWeb, you need to know are you are you supposed to be the handler? Mm -hmm. And so I, I was expecting this function to get hit. You get with the same result slash. with a trailing slash. Oh, let's try it. Yes. Well, it's not even hitting my handler for whatever the break point reason. Is not is not trapping it. Right. You're not hitting right. break point. So it's not even traversing that part of the code. Yeah. Let's restart this thing and see what might have gone wrong in here. We're not even getting to the Z deception. I need this to work before we can get the Z deception. All right. So we're returning Zach. All right. There you go. Now it's returning his handler. Uh-huh. Okay. You must be stepping. Um, what do you mean? Are you stepping forward in the in the debugger? No, no, it's 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 running. Okay. So now if I do this, it's interesting. It's not. It doesn't have the path registered properly for some reason. So here's what you do: a git status, and you see what you've changed. Diff common. changed that that's the only thing that changed okay well we'll do a git checkout comment <laughs> get status all right and then we'll rebuild this thing and see what happens if that letter h somehow mattered i can't I, it shouldn't i definitely have seen this run <laughs> I too have seen this. You even you even read it. <laughs> Try this again. 
terminal. Come back to Oh, you know what the difference is? What? Windows. <laughs> I bet you the difference is Windows. Somehow the path is being compared wrong or or something. I bet you it's something along those lines. So let's see if I turn this off. I mean, I must have developed it here, though. But uh, this goes back to WSL. Now we change to the uh, ZD location, pull. You're sure it's not an issue that it thinks you're in client? No, oh, so um, the default binding is uh, applied if none of them match. And the default binding is the client handle. I see. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. If you don't say edge client v1, then you get client. Ex exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And so what I've, what's interesting, let's just start this one more time. Um, it should start up. It should, I just wanted to get into the section where it checks for the handler. So if you, if we look at the path that's being solicited for it's slash, which is obviously not going to match our root path. Right. And, and then when I issue this request, well, the request and is slash Zach, isn't it? Not for yes, but but the real the real question is: Do I have another? Am I running this on a different port? Like, what about that? Did I put it on a different port? ZDH Quick Start already initialized. It doesn't seem like it. Let's go look at the actual file itself. Find twelve eighty in here. No, nope, it's listening on twelve eighty. Like I was thinking maybe I had another one running that was confusing it, but slash Zach should be being solicited and our little handler here isn't even being solicited. So yeah. And you're not running into the hyper V loop back magic because you're doing everything in windows. Right. Yep. In fact, I remember developing this in windows because as we mentioned before, it wasn't, uh, I, I don't have it in WSL yet. That seems to rule out the risk that the the term path is being conflated between URL path and Windows path. Yeah, I, I'm I'm puzzled as to what is happening here. Okay. Can you in the debugger? Can you simply print? Can you catch and print the URL that's being requested before you get to that point? Um, I I. I could go back to like the client. I mean, I'd have to go to the client a little earlier in the hierarchy. Yeah. The, the weird thing is our, our X web is not being solicited. Have I configured everything here correctly? Let's see. It started it up. It, it told me the right location. Uh, let's put, let's put index on this. You get the same result if you remove the trailing slash from the location property. Well, y yeah, but I, I thought maybe I needed to ask for index.html. Maybe I needed to ask for an actual location. It doesn't seem to matter. This is a disappointing ZDTV. This has been a, a, this has been a train wreck. Sharing's not working. Harder than it should be. Sharing isn't working. This isn't working. What's going on? This was worked literally last night. <laughs> literally last night. Take a nap um, and sacrifice something valuable to the demo gods and try again. I guess. I guess. Well, there's no <laughs> Z deception though. Like so, what I wanted to do, my next step is going to be adding an identity file. And this is the Z deception part. Right. So basically, once you have uh let's just use all that. these X web servers are on the normal network, they're not listening on the zero trust network. Yes, as we would call it, the underlay right so these things all have ports exposed and nobody wants to expose ports um at least you shouldn't unless you absolutely need to so what i was going to do was i wanted to declare a brand new web um array item that is zach so what i was going to do was have zach and management on the same 
interface with the same bind point like this. And we'll use 2280 for this one and 22. Oh, this might be fun. This will actually well, does tell it us have something a, else. Does it even have a port if it's not underlay? I mean, so so uh, there right now there is no way in XWeb to not have a port. Well, that's it, what makes me think your idea might be good, but maybe it doesn't belong under the web listeners. Maybe it's like a like a new kind of listener, like a ZD listener instead well, of. Well, no, no. Here, here's here is the difference. Oh, for God's sake! What is going on today? I can instead of listening on all ports on all IPs, I can choose to exclusively listen on the local interface, the, the loopback. Yeah. You've got too and many so, bits there, too many zeros. Thanks. And so uh, this would be a game changer because now okay. the management API is split. This is called splitting the management API, right? right? So I come up to here and I find the fabric. Oh, where's the management API? There it is. <clears throat> Bind that one on your new listener exclusively. Exactly. And so I come down here and I, uh, I got my APIs. Sure, sure. So you're you're sheltering the most sensitive part. Yeah, exactly. And I would keep it entirely from the internet, right? Yeah. Right now, no when you of attack. Right. So when you start, let's see if I did it right. Let's see if it'll start. Um, right now, when you start up your controller, it will just out of by default, it'll have a listening port on the internet for the management plane, and you can entirely take it. What is that? I can entirely take it out of the internet. So now instead of curling to 1280, 2280, something must be wrong. I must not be reading the correct file. Could that be what it is? No, because I had the Zach in there. And well, now you're 22. in WSL, right? So that's a different loopback. Well, that's, that's fine. I mean, that's Unless you've got some no, that's a good point. I use localhost. Let's use 127.0.0.12. Just take that out of the equation. There we go. And now we hit Zach. Okay. So that actually succeeded, strangely enough. So there must be some precedent. There must be a pre there you go. There's Zach's login page. So we can go to Zach slash login. I think. And then it'll come back here. It'll tell you that the path being requested is Zach slash login yep. and it'll return a value. And there you go. So that's really interesting. I wonder why and how the precedent was uh, wrong before. I didn't, I didn't. Um, what's, your, I didn't what's your hypothesis there? The, the client API is simply taking precedence at the moment. And so when so I split them, split them at work correctly, there's no client API. Yeah. So on because port, of, yeah. Right. So because it's on a different port and because th there's no oh, client yeah. API, it's not taking precedence. And I don't know why it worked for me the first time and why it failed this time. So but, you expected client API to only be the uh, only only be used as a fallback uh if nothing matched. And it's acting like Zach didn't match, and so it's falling back to the client API. Well, notice how this time it hit my is handler function. It did yeah. not hit. It did not hit the is handler function before. Yeah, the breakpoint was never reached. Yeah, and I don't understand why. Right, that's the that's the strange part. Is it never? It's it's as though this Zach. This this um, X Web implementation wasn't referenced correctly, right? You know? So, well, when you were testing before, did you have the edge management binding on a separate port? I have the edge management. No, no. In fact, as it says in the doc, we can do this. So I can have the Zach bound to both interfaces if I yeah. so choose. Yeah. Sorry, both ports if I so choose. So uh, let's fire them up. So one's 2280, that's the management only binding. 
Yes, and then I basically put them on both ports right now. So 1280 should also respond now. And if 1280 responds with something like this, like then this is all Zach stuff, yeah. then we can be very confused as to as to what is actually happening here. Is maybe is Go Land was... running in Windows? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm starting to wonder if uh, there wasn't some some bad copy in here, you know, some some bad paste or something. Mm. Oh my god! Straight paste. Oh my god! Can can what? There are there are two controller.yaml files open. Yeah, uh -huh. I've been I've been editing the wrong one. Okay. Well, you were you were worried about that. Go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to Hi out there. Nice to the demo guy. We got a hi from good. somebody in chat there. Uh, <laughs> Ken, Ken, we've been editing the wrong file, dude. <laughs> oh, I didn't catch it either. So look at that. Look at oh, oh, that's. Uh, I want to say that's beautiful, but it is certainly not beautiful. That is, uh, that is very Clint-like. That's for sure. All right. Well, well that's. That's a lot of fun. Let's close that file, shall we? All right. So now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, we can go back to Zeta. Now we can go to Inception time, though, which is nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ryan's watching. Hi, Ryan. Yep. <laughs> well, you could have you could have told me. It would have been nice if you let me know uh, what I had screwed up out here. Uh, that's hilarious. All right. So let's try the ZD Inception stuff. We've got uh the right config file so we know that it works now um i do i desperately want to be able to show it let's all right let me i'm going to just take the time oh, i'm going to actually it all. i'm going to actually show it so give me one second while i share a different screen a different window different brave tab go back and shout out to ryan again now I can go to local host colon 2280 Zach login. My little port is insecure. And uh, right now you'll have to enter your um, controller name, local, and your address. But I want this You're to change. Yeah. Yeah. Local host 2280. That's just a holdover from the way the old console worked. Admin, admin, and bam, and we're in. And so there we go. Oh, we're not seeing the, the address bar, it seems. Restream. Restream's really letting me down today. Anyway, here's our Zach. We've got our identities. We've got our services. We might as well use Zach to define a service. Let's do that. So let's make an identity. And we'll make, call this one. simple service form. Oh, this button? Yeah. Well, that's a fun bug that Ryan can fix for me right there. Add a new identity. I want to add, add a Flint. Oh, I guess you need both. Yeah. DD TV. This will be for my um, my tunneler. Roll attributes. I don't care. Download. 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 Okay. Download. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to go some other way to get my identity. That's that's another fun bug. Identities identities oh the the mouse isn't trying to download all right refresh did it crash what's going on here how does Click. the browser decide between downloading or displaying a file um it depends on if it's mapped to a mime type and if it's uh html or whatever like if it's if it's HTML or HTML, the browser will display it. Otherwise, it'll just tell you to download it. I bet you there's a header. Like when you go to raw GitHub user content, you it's probably do that too. It. So there's probably a header. That yeah, just application helps. content type for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mime types, if you will. All right. I am going to go to my. I'm so confused. This. Oh, you you know I'm going to blame Windows maybe. This might be a. This might just be Windows being wonky i can't i can't open my desktop edge for windows either oh no so maybe this is maybe i've been bad mouthing restream for no particular reason all right i'm going to add this particular identity to my local um zd desktop edge for windows so that i have it here 
This is Clint ZDTV. All right, cool. There's that identity. And now I need a... This is so bizarre. It's just not letting me click on things when it should. All right, now I need a new identity. This one's going to be for the ZD console. Actually, Z ZTcation. No, what do I call it? ZDception. ZDception. And we'll save this one. All right. And then we'll get ZDception's token and save ZDception to the same place. All right, cool. So we've made two identities. Now we need to make a service. Oh, this was where Ken's like, use the other one. I will. That is a fun bug. All right. Escape out of there. Add a new service. Did you have escape? Did. Yeah. And so this service is going to be called uh, ZTception uh, Zach, I guess. Or it works. Where is it hosted? The. No. You didn't enroll yet. You, you think that matters? That shouldn't matter. ZDception. We'll not be using simple service. Let's go to services and click on plus and click on identity name. No, it's the identity name. Services. Okay, don't use the latest Zach. <laughs> <laughs> this is not working very well. Let's find out what's going on. Let's go back to identities, go back to services, click on services, click on plus. It could be that it's the difference in the way you're hosting it. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, add a new service, service name. Bob. I have to agree with you, though, that simple service form, if it is filtering out unenrolled identities, it shouldn't. No, there's no way it should. Yeah, oh, you know what? We can always, let me check my console. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's much better. So uh, my console shows me numerous errors. That, oh, that's a feature branch I built, not the main build. Oh, yeah. Coming from emitted by the controller process. Uh, Vendor.js is going absolutely crazy at the moment with errors. And that might be the reason why um, my browser is so erratic, because it is like logging error after error after error after error. Uh, and it's probably because some resource that Zach wants is just not coming through um so i think we're gonna have to put a pin in z deception because my brow that looks like we lost clint <laughs> just to just to put a bow on it all right bye everybody <laughs> oh wait he's back and the back like I was like, I just said, like, just to put a bow in it, because Clint <laughs> like, put a pin in it and it just so drops. That's, out. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, you know what? Problem. I was like, okay, so lesson it. lesson <laughs> learned, Ken. If you're going to use Restream to stream with, uh -huh. don't don't use the same browser to demo dripping wet stuff, because. Okay. If you do, and that dripping wet stuff has some sort of infinite recursive loop in it, there and your CPU, contagion. well, when when that browser crashes, it takes down Restream along with it. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> All right. So we we are going to do a Z deception after we get this working. Uh, that was <laughs> going to be the ZD TV. I hope it's been fun and exciting. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, Ken. What do you think? I think that's a good place to stop since we're clearly, I mean, you know, I take a risk with this ZDTV. I you knew do. literally, yeah. literally this was brand new dripping wet stuff. So I don't mind uh, showing it, but we'll obviously have this sorted before somebody tries to use it. Um, no, I think it, you're, I think you're spot on with the idea of embedding the UI in an option binding. Optional. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense that you can browse to it and get API docs. You can browse to it and get the UI. There's no increase in risk because it's still just implementing the same API. This is the same surface area for attack. So I, I think that's a, that's a slam dunk to just ship the UI with the controller. I'm still trying to wrap my head around where you're going with ZDception. I'm going to have to wait to let that. I'm going to have to absorb that, I think, a little bit before I really get it, but it's, it's, well, 
Well, we took a, it took us a little, little, you know, bumpy ZDTV. I didn't expect it to take an hour to be able to display the Zach. I thought it was going to take 15 minutes. But between the restream shenanigans and all the other stuff and, and editing the wrong file like a moron. Uh, oh, this is our outro music? Outro. Love it. <laughs> it's all new. We have a good this ZDTV. Anyway, uh, between those things, it took a little bit too long. So... Um, yeah, I guess that'll do it for our ZDTV. Ken's hitting us with some nice, uh, smooth beats to, to leave with. And uh, we'll see the next time we'll get ZDception working and, and we'll do an actual ZDception. We'll teach Ken what that might mean and maybe you too. All right, Clint. All right, bud. That was fun. See you guys. <laughs>